Hello everyone and welcome once again to another episode of the Solar Punk Farmer where we cultivate resilient communities through radical agriculture. I am really excited for today's episode because we are going to be talking about designing and building a mineralization tank for an aquaponics system. But Mr. Solar Punk Farmer, you ask, what is a mineralization tank and why should I have one on my system? Well, my dear viewer, let me tell you a bit about what they can do for you. So, in an aquaponics system, fish will excrete their waste products in two different forms. The first form is essentially urine, it's the byproduct of protein metabolism and it is excreted in the form of ammonia. The other fraction is solid fish waste comprised of organic matter, that is fish poop. So typically in an aquaponic system, all of the water soluble waste from protein metabolism will be broken down and processed within the biofilter. However, the same cannot be said about the solid fish poop. So in an aquaponic system, the solid fish waste is consumed and broken down by a class of organisms known as heterotrophs. These organisms range from more complex life forms like the red composting worms I introduced to my system, all the way down to single-celled microorganisms. They're a rather diverse bunch. However, the community of these organisms in an aquaponic system is not always large enough to break down all of the fish poop, or even a very substantial portion of it, really. Your mileage may vary depending on the type of system design that you have, for example, media bed systems provide more of a habitat for the heterotrophic organisms, but for example, if you're doing something like deep water culture or NFT, they really don't have much living space. In your typical aquaponic system, most of these heterotrophic organisms are aerobic organisms, so they require an environment with both high levels of solid fish waste to break down as their food source and high levels of oxygen in order to thrive. Now, fish poop is actually very nutrient rich, so if you don't have a very large community of heterotrophic organisms in your aquaponic system, then your plants are gonna be missing out on a lot of the fertility that they could otherwise utilize. This means that you may otherwise have to stock your system more densely with fish or dose with supplements more frequently. So, the purpose of a mineralization tank is to provide an ideal habitat for these organisms that we divert the fish poop to. That way they can break down the fish poop and render it into a form that is readily available to the plants. So, in my case, by installing this mineralization tank in my system, I should be able to combat the phosphate deficiency issue that my plants are currently experiencing. I have also observed a couple other micronutrient deficiencies cropping up, for example manganese and boron, that are pretty rare in aquaponic systems. So obviously my system is not utilizing all of the nutrients that it could be. This is in part due to the fact that I have very demanding crops in my system. For example, the tomatoes and the strawberries. And as I have recently postulated, due to the fact that because my water temperatures are still cool, the tilapia are not quite consuming all of their food. So not all of the nutrients in the fish food are being fully released into the system. So I know I have been working on a supplementation protocol for phosphate in my system, but based on my research, I have come to the conclusion that I should build a mineralization tank first and then determine the appropriate amount of phosphate I should supplement with if I still need to supplement. Don't you worry, my dear viewer, but I am going to be getting the mineralization tank fully operational first. So as far as this design goes, it's actually pretty simple. You can find variations of it all across the internet. All it is is a drum with air stones in it that the fish poop goes into. All right, now it's important to note that it actually takes about four weeks for the fish poop to fully break down, but in order to maintain stable water chemistry in your system and help prevent the accumulation of too many solids, it's best to flush out and refill your mineralization tank every day. So without further ado, I will walk you guys through the design. Let's check it out. All right, everybody, here is a schematic of the mineralization tank I will be constructing. This is a fairly simple device, so if you want to have a look at something a bit more complicated, I would recommend heading over to Bigelow Brook Farms' YouTube channel and checking out the device that Rob has built for his system. Anyway, so the objective here is to collect all of the solids from the swirl filter that is the fish waste and hold it for about four weeks in an extremely aerobic environment that promotes the growth of large colonies of heterotrophic bacteria that will mineralize the fish waste, that is break it down into its elemental constituents, which of course includes many nutrients that will be useful to the plants. Since these nutrients are released in ionic form, they will be dissolved into the water column, which will allow me to flush them back into the sump tank so that they can be utilized by my plants. So all we have here really is a 20 gallon food grade high density polyethylene drum that has two air stones sitting at the bottom. The air stones will be providing roughly 5 to 8.5 liters per hour per gallon of water. When it comes to actually 
actually operating the tank, all that I'm really going to do is flush the waste solids that the swirl filter has collected into this mineralization tank every one or two days to introduce new solids. And then also every one or two days, turn off the air stones to allow the solids that are suspended in the water to settle to the bottom so that the clarified water can be decanted off back into the sump tank. In this way, I'll be introducing a fairly constant stream of mineralized nutrients from the fish waste back into my aquaponic system. So this is considered an offline mineralization tank because there's no water throughput from the rest of the system being constantly pumped through it, but I am going to be plumbing it in line with the rest of the system. So that's fairly important to note. I will say that from what I can tell, this design appears to be pretty commonly used throughout the aquaponics community. However, I have made a few minor modifications to it so that my needs are better suited. So the water level at the top is actually going to be sitting level with the water level in the swirl filter to ensure that there are no issues with overflowing or backflow and that's why I've placed it on the cinder block right here. So the first minor modification I've made is right here. I will be cutting the inlet pipe at an angle to discourage air bubbles from the air stones from being trapped in the inlet. The other minor modification that I have made is the addition of this standpipe right here. So what this standpipe will enable me to do is set the volume of water that I will be decanting from the mineralization tank with each flushing back into the sump tank. So this is essentially to plan ahead in case I need to do some trial and error with appropriate flushing volumes. And I'm hoping that this will save me some work and some headaches in the long run, since this is actually the first time I will be building and operating a mineralization tank in one of my systems. You know how it goes with aquaponics. Most of the time, every modification that you make will require some fair amount of troubleshooting. So I'm planning for that here. Anyways, this is what I'm going to be building. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna give you guys a better look at this thing. If you look on the inside, you could see the diagonally cut inlet and the outwards facing uh, flushing outlet. I oriented the intake of the flushing line towards the outside of the drum in order to minimize the amount of solids that collect inside of the pipes here because that will reduce the overall efficiency of the unit. Anyways, I'm going to get this plumbed up. It's going to be impossible for me to film the actual plumbing of the mineralization tank because the space back there is quite tiny, uh, but I will show you guys what it looks like after it's done.
Okay, everyone, we are all plumbed up and obviously it is dark now. As with all aquaponics projects, this one took me a bit longer than I'd hoped. But as you can see, intake from the swirl filter and then outlet to sump. Here are the air stones I'm using. I just bought them from a local hydroponics store. They should do the trick just fine. And as far as the air plumbing goes, I mounted the manifold on the tower support strut with zip ties right here. So the bottom feed leads to the MBBR. The middle two go to the air stones that are in the fish tank. The next two go to the mineralization tank. And the top one is a relief valve in case there's too much air flowing through the system. All right, well, as you can see, the swirl filter is pretty dirty. I just agitated the solids around a little bit to kind of stir them up on the bottom and to make sure that all that wonderful gunk is sitting right over the bottom drain. So without further ado, let's debut this mineralization tank. All right, I'm just going to uh, see if I can position this, this flashlight strategically. Here's the valve. There we go. Wonderful sound. Look at that wonderful dirty water. And so the mineralization tank is going to fill to the max water height of the swirl filter. Okay, so there you have it, folks. The air is on and the mineralization tank is now fully functional. All that is left to do is add some blackstrap molasses to get the microbes going and then bide my time. Pretty soon I should see a substantial performance boost in the plants. So when I want to decant the mineralization tank, all I have to do is shut off the air lines right here and then wait maybe an hour or two for the solids to settle to the bottom and then I can flush out the clarified water into the sump tank through this valve here from the top of the mineralization tank. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, everyone, so that is how you design and build a simple mineralization tank for your aquaponic system. And that is going to do it for this episode of The Solar Punk Farmer. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon below so that you can receive notifications when I upload future videos. Stay safe, stay at home, and see you next time. Goodbye.